Today's episode begins with the week's Starship news coming out of Boca Chica, Texas. Then we'll talk about why Starlink's latest mission was scrubbed yesterday and again today. Take a look at what else is to come and then finish with today's honorable mention. I'm The Kevin and this is SpaceX in the News. So SpaceX does have a notum in place with the FAA to conduct ground testing through the end of October. So I think we can safely assume that they plan on doing several stress tests and static fires over the next several weeks, you know, when they're not hopping 10 cans into the sky. On Tuesday, SpaceX performed their first cryo test of the SN7.1 prototank after it was moved from its mobile mount to the more sophisticated test mount that includes three hydraulic battering rams. All seemed to go well in that they didn't pop her top, so the fun don't stop. That's an OG Pringles reference for you youngins. In the wee hours of the following morning, SpaceX did another cryo test, presumably using those hydraulic ramps to simulate Raptor engine thrust. But once again, she didn't become a party popper. <laughs> <laughs> what the f but this is to be expected. Why would SpaceX want to destroy their more expensive stand when they could use their more basic mobile mount? So later that night on Wednesday, they moved it over and welded her down. It was expected they would test to failure last night, but instead another stress test was performed, venting was seen, and then ceased. Workers immediately regrouped on site to make whatever adjustments, repairs, or inspections they were doing. And as of the recording of this video, it looks like the next available test date for possible RUD is Monday evening, but you know, that's subject to change. It could happen by the end of the weekend. But the flight of SN8 is what everyone is really looking forward to, and has been for a year now. The aero covers that blends the fins with the body of the rocket have just been installed, so we can expect the vessel to sprout her wings possibly by the end of the weekend. Elon said last week that they were proceeding directly to her pre-flight checks before the 20 clicker. SN8 Starship with flaps and nose cones should be done in about a week, then static fire, check out static fire again, then flight to 60,000 feet and back. One way or another, excitement is an Elon guarantee. Support of Greater Boca Chica, South Padre Island, and Brownsville community is very much appreciated. SpaceX has filed a special temporary authority with the FCC for SN8's 20-click flight, and it looks like it could happen as early as October 11th, but definitely before April 11th. Here's to hoping, at least. If SN8 craters, SN9 and SN10 are close behind, high production rate allows for fast iteration. You know, our eccentric members are well aware that I've been waiting at least six months to make my new Boom Time merch available to you guys. We're so close now, we have a prospective date, I think it's time. Order yours now using the link in the description below. They're just so comfortable. So while it might not be a case, it does seem like there's a possibility SN5 and SN6 may be benched indefinitely, but I doubt it. Meanwhile, SpaceX is watering SN9. She has sprouted a common dome inside the mid bay as she continues her vertical growth. All of her parts have been spotted and she has also received her retractable legs. New fins have been delivered on site. However, it's not confirmed at the moment which serial number they are for. The parts of SN10 are still being collected its common dome has been sleeved with rings, and traces of SN11 are lying around here somewhere as well. We assume so are the parts for the super heavy booster SN1. Pretty soon we'll start seeing a lot of its parts sprawled out across the place. It's going to require many rings to reach a length that will span to 11 meters of the ceiling of that 81 meter tall high bay you see there. 9 meters if you count the legs. Kind of makes SN5 and 6 look like Pee Wee League. Stacking the 50 meter tall Starship on top of a 72 meter tall booster will be no easy task. Elon calls doing so on an orbital pad a likely limiting factor on getting upcoming Starships to orbit successfully. They'll build several Starships just to improve the production system. He thinks the first Starship to actually reach orbit will be SN mid-teens. All right, let's move on to Starlink. Yesterday, Starlink 12 or 13, depending on who's counting, was expected to launch from pad 39A at the Cape but was scrubbed a half hour before liftoff due to a recovery issue that was encountered. Elon elaborated further on Twitter, writing the current was too strong for the drone ship to hold station. Thrusters to be upgraded for future missions, which I found interesting because this particular drone ship, just read the instructions, just received thruster upgrades several months back. I guess she's gonna need another round of steroid injections to fight these current conditions. <laughs> Earlier this week on Tuesday, SpaceX also asked the FCC's permission to upgrade their boats further by equipping 10 Starlink user terminals to them. It's not clear at the moment which ships those UFOs on a stick will commandeer or for what purpose exactly. While there is no launch date currently available for this Starlink rocket, when it is given the green light, 
It will be powered by the same first stage booster that took Bob and Doug to space earlier in the summer and later launched for the NSS-2 mission. This mission will also be the third flight for one of the fairing halves, setting a reusability record for the company. The following Starlink mission is expected to launch by the end of the month as well. And at the end of the month, we've got the Falcon 9 GPS-3 mission for the Chair Force. Hoo and now it's time for today's Honorable Mention. Riding on a SpaceX rocket in a Blue Origin capsule or within the confines of a Virgin Galactic space plane may not be the only means in which you, a space tourist, can catch a decent clips of the not flat Earth. How about taking a balloon up to 100,000 feet or 30,000 meters with seven of your closest friends? Of course, that's not technically space, but yeah, who's counting? people who like to poop on parties, that's who. For years, Space Perspective has been developing Spaceship Neptune, a pressurized capsule designed to be towed under a big balloon. The tour would last six hours and include all the essential necessities for a good time. A bar, a bathroom, and of course, plenty of windows to stare out of. No ticket prices have been disclosed, but in June, company representatives said it will initially likely cost about 125 grand per seat. Space.com just reported that the company has plans to start test flights early next year and is partnering with exclusive resorts so 40 of their vacation club members can call dibs on the first bona fide flights. But the best part about all of this is that if something goes wrong with the deflating balloon upon descent, Spaceship Neptune will use an emergency parachute as the recovery method, splashing down the capsule in the ocean. Ha <laughs> ha! Parachutes! Man, the future is thrilling. Well, that's all I have for you guys today, but thank you for stopping by and tuning in. And thank you, eccentric members and patrons, for supporting the making of these videos. Not a member yourself? Check out the links in the description below to join the family meow. Y'all have a nominal weekend. Don't do anything I would do. And Godspeed.